This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, the NZTA prepares for its next Dunedin project, which will see a walking link between Port Chalmers and the city. Otago's most promising divers are lining up to make a splash in an annual swimming competition. And the popularity of this year's Auto Spectacular is set to have a flow-on effect for one community venue. Good evening Dunedin, I'm Rebecca Dupree. The New Zealand Transport Agency is gearing up for a costly project linking Port Chalmers to the city. It's about to construct a shared walking and cycling path from St Leonard's to the port. And that will require cooperation from the country's largest rail transport operator. Checking plans for a multi-million dollar pathway. Jason Forbes of the NZTA is managing the project to construct a shared walking and cycling path from St Leonard's to Port Chalmers. It's expected to take two years to build and will cost between five and ten million dollars. Uh, we're currently working through the detailed design and that's coming near completion. Uh, we'd expect to have a detailed design complete around Christmas. The 5.2 kilometre stretch of path will connect to that already in place between the stadium and St Leonard's. It will be undertaken in sections with some of the most tricky parts attempted first. The NZTA has to reclaim some of the harbour to build alongside the railway. And Forbes says the project wouldn't be happening without Kiwi Rail's cooperation. We still need to obtain our consents go through final agreements with both Kiwi Rail and the Dunedin City Council because Council will be maintaining the path and the majority of the path is on Kiwi Rail's land. All costs are being met by the NZTA with Kiwi Rail covering its expenses to shift a section of the tracks. The Council will be responsible for maintaining the path once it's finished, something residents have been wanting for more than 10 years. It's a prime very busy highway with the port at the end and there's quite a lot of narrow pinch points that are quite dangerous for road users. About 250 people a day use the completed path between St Leonard's and the city and the numbers are expected to increase once the full length of it's finished, connecting Port Chalmers and the residential communities in between. Rosie Mannins, 39 Dunedin News. Police are seeking two would-be robbers who attempted to hold up a service station and a dairy with an axe early yesterday. The two men, believed to be in their late teens or early twenties, first confronted staff at the mobile service station on Hillside Road. They ran from the service station empty-handed around midnight and half an hour later tried to enter the Lookout Point dairy. The shop owner was inside with his wife and another staff member, although the store was closed. The young men tried to get inside, threatening the owner with a metre-long axe, but he locked them out and called police as they ran off. The region's most promising young divers are putting months of training to the test. Just over 20 competitors have converged at Moana Pool for the annual South Island Diving Championships and is providing divers with the opportunity to make their mark ahead of national meets. Attempting to achieve perfection while falling. Divers from Otago give their all to impress judges at the South Island Diving Championships. And this year, local divers are only up against themselves, with no other South Island clubs able to participate. It's for clubs within the South Island. Unfortunately, we've only got one club because Christchurch got um, knocked out with the earthquake. But we do have guest divers from the North Island from Diving Waikato. The loss of the Christchurch facility has meant a substantial drop in South Island divers. But Shvivink says a bounce back is likely, with a new Christchurch dive pool in the planning stages. Something competitor Rebecca Fisher is looking forward to, as the only person nationwide competing in the Women's Open platform event, crediting the tough nature of the sport for the small numbers involved. Not everybody can do it. There's, there's the, you've got to be graceful and you've got to be so brave as well. Like, it's just scary, you just stand on the board shaking but then you just have to push through it and it takes a really strong mind to be able to do that and 
you have to be powerful but look nice at the same time. Fisher says there are a lot of up and coming divers in the Otako Club and she says the challenge for them is conquering their nerves and going all in with each dive. You've got that pressure, you've got one chance to do it right and if you do it wrong and it's too bad you just move on and I think a lot of people get quite intimidated by that. With each dive judges are looking for fluid movement, how competitors look in the air and the way they enter the water and these guys hope they'll rise to the high standards expected particularly lower grade divers who want all the experience they can get ahead of the Skills National in Hamilton at the end of the month. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. A Mosgiel man is celebrating his success in the Tri-Nations Butchery Competition hosted in Auckland recently. Greg Edgerton was part of the national team which retained its Tri-Nations title against Australia and the United Kingdom. The local butcher works at Mosgiel's New World Supermarket, where he's been preparing for the annual contest. He's been a butcher for more than 20 years and was selected for the Sharp Blacks team last year. The team's six members managed to win the third consecutive Tri-Nations title for New Zealand. Edgerton hopes to keep his place on the team and compete overseas at next year's Tri-Nations event. A share of the profit from this year's Auto Spectacular show is going towards the retention of Dunedin's only physiotherapy pool. Thousands of classic car enthusiasts gathered in the city for the annual event and with the best sets of wheels for more than 30 car clubs on display, it had fanatics revving their engines. A day for motorheads to indulge. Some of the South's most luxurious cars are displayed in a joint project between Otago's Classic Motoring Club and Ford and Falcon Club. From a 2010 Supersport Bentley to a 1934 Duesenberg J Phantom, there was something available for any taste. It was the Mosler GT3 race car from Highlands Motorsport Park. It was that fabulous yellow Mustang over there from Mark's Cars. 31 car clubs here can, uh, have put displays in of around five cars. Formerly called Swaparama, the show has been running since 1974. Each year, a charity is chosen to receive some of the money raised from the show, and this year, it's for the local physio pool. We've selected the Otago Therapeutic Pool Trust, which is a very worthwhile course. Casey says there's a real need for classic car shows like this, the only one of its kind in this part of New Zealand. And he says interest is growing, with the numbers up from last year. I think we may be up a little on last year. We had 4,000 people through last year, including all the kids. Kids love it because we turn on free entertainment for them, face painting and all that sort of thing. So it's, it's probably on a par or a little better than last year. With around 150 cars and bikes on display, the show was a success for the club. And members have no plan to turn off their engines anytime soon. Annabelle Dick, 39 Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we debrief with the Dunedin Marathon Race Director and we'll find out which project the Mosgiel Rotary Club is turning its attention to. Big Orange, for all your movies, records, books and games. Pre-loved needs and vinyl records, 45s, DVDs. A South Dunedin family owned business for over 15 years. Check us out on Facebook, opposite Westpac on the sunny side of King Edward Street. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history.
Wake up time and another frantic day ahead for Haraway's Oat Singles. With three delicious flavours in each pack, they don't last long with this family. They're so convenient and tasty and they're ready in seconds. Haraway's Oat Singles are the ideal breakfast or snack on the run for today's busy families. And there's a flavour to suit everyone. Beat the rush and make sure you get your favourite flavour. Haraway's Oat Singles. Try new Kiwi Favourites Caramel Variety Pack. Quality Tailors, the alterations specialists, adjusting alterations made to measure. Quality Tailors, fitting to need for over 15 years. Call 477 8028 162 Princess Street, one shop down from Dowling Street. Pallet fires are growing in popularity in Otago with people who want a clean and efficient form of home heating. The sight of a burning flame without the problems of chopping, stacking and carting wood around is a winner. Pallet fires. So easy, so efficient. McClellan Refrigeration is your one-stop shop for heat pumps in Dunedin. We have a range of heating, air conditioning and refrigeration solutions. We also have 20 years experience. McClellan Refrigeration, call us on 477 0088. Hello, I'm Dougal Stevenson. Welcome to Museum Diaries, where we showcase some of the rare and wonderful treasures of the Otago Museum, some of which we don't normally see. On the show, we find out about one of the heaviest known bony fish in the world, the sunfish. Jane Malthus is in to show us some intricate lace. Collections officer Jamie Metzger discusses fanny bus garments. And conservation manager Nissa Mildwaters brings in a snake, a crab and a wrasse. Welcome back. Food prices are up, rising 0.4 of a percent overall in the last year. Fresh fruit is significantly more expensive and fresh vegetables are also slightly more costly. Those increases are offset by cheaper dairy products with fresh milk at its cheapest rate in two years. Retail spending is also up, rising to $4.5 billion last month. That's despite a large drop in the cost of fuel, bringing down the overall spend in vehicle-related industries. And on that note, let's take a look at today's markets. The NZX50 is up 18 points. It's now at 5,666. The Dow Jones is up 103 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar is unchanged against the Australian. We are down against the yen, but we're up against the greenback, the pound and the euro. Thousands of residents are in recovery mode after competing in this year's Dunedin Marathon. The event has been held for decades, taking runners on a scenic coastal journey around the harbour. And race director Phil Coax is here to tell us more. Good evening. Good evening, Rebecca. Now, how many people completed the marathon this year? Well, in the marathon itself, we had around about 170, but then we had the associated events like the half and the quarter. So overall, our entries were around about 1,760 through the whole five different events. Hmm. Tell us about the course. Uh, the course has always been traditionally the same for the full marathon runners. They start down at Harrington Point on the Otago Peninsula and run around the beautiful Otago Harbour uh, into the city and then head out to Port Chalmers and the half make their way from Foresight Bar through the city land spots such as the gardens, the university, the railway station and then get on the walkway cycleway. The new event this year, the quarter, started also at Foresight Bar Stadium, went straight under the State Highway and onto the Walkway Cycleway. All events finish at Watson Park, Port Chalmers. Mm. Do you know how many people turned out for the quarter? We, were, we had around about, uh, about 280 running it and around about 130 people walking it. Mm. Any records broken? Or of course some records would have been set for that one. 
Yeah, yeah, no records in the other main events, but as, yeah, the new event, the, the first quarter event, will create a record for people to challenge mm. next year. Mm. What's the history of this event? It goes right back to 1979 when it started, so we're around about 38, 37 years in, in uh, running it. And uh, originally by the Otago branch of the Federation of Sports Medicine, and it was ran in the middle of July, and it was to encourage people into getting into exercise. Mm. So while all harriers and that were running around in their road <laughs> races and, and cross country. Do runners um, raise money for charities or other causes? Yes, certainly. We also have an official fundraising for uh, a group on the day. Mm. And uh, this year it was Red Cross who also provided our medical coverage. And in the past we've had various groups and we've made you know, donations to other groups, and, but there's a lot of little other groups that also organise themselves and raise money as well. Mm. Now the weather yesterday wasn't quite as pleasant as it was on Saturday. How was it for runners and walkers? Uh, challenging, I think, uh, especially for the full marathon runners who came from Harrington Point. They would have had to battle into that southerly for around about the first 27 k's of a 42k event. Mm. Uh, once they got into the city and turned onto the walkway cycleway, they had a good tailwind to the end. The others would have experienced some along the way, but in the end, once they got on the walkway cycleway, they had that tailed wind, which took them into uh, Port Chalmers. Uh, briefly, they had it when coming along Albertson Avenue to the finish, but um, I looked at the people coming across the line and they were thoroughly enjoying it, in spite of the conditions. <laughs> when do people start training for this event? If you're looking at the marathon, they're probably three or four months out. Most of them are pretty seasoned marathon runners and know what's required. And then the, you've got the half marathon ones who may you know, run from 10 to 12 weeks out from the event. Thus the introduction of the quarter where it was less stressful and where mm. you could probably get some good training under your belt in maybe four or five weeks to take on that, on that shorter distance. Mm. Do you know how many people from Dunedin take part versus how many people from outside of Dunedin? There's basically around about 80% of local people, but then we get a lot of people from throughout the South Island, Central, down South, and coming down from the North Island. There's a sprinkling of people who come from overseas who are basically in the country having a holiday, and they see this event and they come down and take part. Mm. What does the future look like? Is the quarter going to be a goer for next year? I think it will be. It was our first time, so the logistics of it were, were quite challenging, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll improve that next year. And... Um, I think um, Cadbury's have acknowledged that by continuing their sponsorship. They've been with us for an amazing 28 years, which is a very long thing, and we've gone through millions of Moro bars, so <laughs> um, I think it looks good. Um, also, previously, the walkway cycleway had only extended to St Leonard's, and hopefully next year we'll be taking that right the way to Port Chalmers. Oh, something to look forward to. Yeah, it certainly is. Dunedin Marathon Race Director Phil Coax, thank you so much for your time. It's my pleasure. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, members of a community group focus their attention on the new Mosgiel Pool and we'll find out how some of our younger residents are marking a city milestone. Do you want support for your breathing? You are not alone. In New Zealand, over 600,000 people have some form of breathing difficulty, especially with the high pollen season in New Zealand. Puff Plus is an excellent natural product developed to support lung function and breathing difficulties. Puff Plus is so effective, you get a no questions asked, money back guarantee on the first purchase. Give it a go, you have nothing to lose. Call now, 0800 502 402. Take as directed. If symptoms persist, see your healthcare professional. Pallet fires are growing in popularity in Otago with people who want a clean and efficient form of home heating. The sight of a burning flame without the problems of chopping, stacking and carting wood around is a winner. Pallet fires. So easy, so efficient. Pregnant. Need to talk. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free. It's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Big Orange, for all your movies, records, books and games. Pre-loved needs and vinyl records, 45s, DVDs. 
a South Dunedin family owned business for over 15 years. Check us out on Facebook, opposite Westpac on the sunny side of King Edward Street. McClellan Refrigeration is your one stop shop for heat pumps in Dunedin. We have a range of heating, air conditioning and refrigeration solutions. We also have 20 years experience. McClellan Refrigeration, call us on 477-0088. It has no arms, no legs, has a drill in its mouth up to eight hours a day and still never complains. It's one of 72 mannequin torsos in our new $3.8 million dental simulation lab. The first and only facility of its kind in New Zealand. My name is Nikki Rose Coltolaro and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Active Furnishes Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishes Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Quality Tailors, the alterations specialists, adjusting alterations made to measure. Quality Tailors, sitting to need for over 15 years. Call 477-8028-162 Princess Street, one shop down from Darling Street. Tune in on Thursday for Motorsport Night on Dunedin Television. Welcome back. The fund fundraising effort for a new Tyree swimming pool is being boosted by thousands of dollars. Money collected at the annual Mosgill Rotary Club Book Fair is being donated to the project. And members say it's an important community cause. Eager readers awaiting a bargain. Mosgill Bowling Club has been transformed into a library for the Rotary Club's main annual fundraiser, with all proceeds going towards the project to build a new swimming pool complex for the Tyree. Rotary got in, has got involved right from the start because um, my vintage believes that we owe it to succeeding generations to get cracking and get this pool out here. Club members gathered more than 15,000 books and 4,000 vinyl records over the past year for the sale, choosing to dedicate the proceeds to the pool project as it's a cause they strongly believe in. Towns of our size have all got lovely pools, uh, Rangiora um, I can think of, uh, and there are others that have got far better facilities than we've got, um, and yes, it would be, it's time to upgrade. Each year the book fair profits go towards a different community initiative. The fundraiser is a massive undertaking for the club, requiring involvement from all 50 odd members. This is our third annual one. The first one went for the Neurological Foundation two years ago, three years ago, and last year for the local St John Ambulance. The exact amount is still being tallied, but members hope it will exceed $10,000 in line with previous years a small but significant contribution to the millions of dollars needed for a new pool. Annabelle Dick, 39 Dunedin News. The city's youngest residents are helping to celebrate an important milestone. The Dunedin Community Child Care Association is marking four decades in the city with fun events for children and adults alike. And the organisers are providing a glimpse into the association's past while they look to the future keeping the city's preschoolers busy. During the fifth consecutive free Move It Day hosted by the Dunedin Community Child Care Association. On offer are bouncy castles, face painting and a raft of physical activities. 
And Association Director Penelope Pask says it's all about encouraging families to get out and about. It's a great opportunity there for families to meet other families um, and just for the kids to come and have some fun, enjoy being together as a family, uh, free, no cost, so yeah, and, and getting some ideas about different things they could be doing at home with, certainly with their children as well. This year's Move It event coincides with the Association's 40th anniversary and PASC says it's great to be able to celebrate with children, parents and past members. We are the biggest childcare organisation in Dunedin um, because we run five centres and home based, uh, about 350 families. So, so our role is to provide community based, quality, excellent early childhood um, education and care for children. Uh, we are not for profit, so we, our heart is the community. The anniversary is a chance to look back at the association's history in Dunedin and consider how much has changed. Pask says it's important to remember the challenges faced by the organisation's founders in the 70s. Women working, women not being at home with children, um, kindergarten was fine, um, play centre, all those things were running, but this was childcare full day, children there all day, they slept there in the afternoon, and it just wasn't the, the done thing at the time, I guess. Um, it was new, something new is always challenges people. Um, and these women had a vision and a heart to provide quality childcare. This is just one of many events taking place to celebrate the milestone. And Pask says while it's good to reflect on the past, she's looking forward to what the next 40 years will bring. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. The New Zealand Transport Agency is finalising plans for a shared cycling and walking path between St Leonard's and Port Chalmers. Otago's top divers have taken the plunge at Moana Pool for the South Island Diving Championships, ahead of bigger national meets. And the most luxurious cars in the South have had motoring enthusiasts turn up in their thousands to the annual Auto Spectacular. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's Otago Daily Times and we're joined by Bruce Quarry. Good evening. Good evening Rebecca. Um, after calls for Dunedin to perhaps be a refugee centre um, for the Syrian refugee crisis, the Mayor Dave Cull has um, been hitting back at criticism from what he calls racism um, for people who are urging the city to turn their back on them. Um, in court today, um, a former Dunedin lawyer has been found guilty in her absence of 46 charges of tax evasion over $180,000. Otago Peninsula residents uh, may have a long wait um, after a section of Highcliffe Road crumbled in the winter storms and there's news that a growing shortage of secondary school teachers um, could threaten to disrupt education across the region and in sport of course Lydia Ko is the big news in golf having become the youngest woman to win a major and Djokovic has beaten Federer in the US Open. Oh, that's all in tomorrow's ODT, thank you Bruce. Time now for tomorrow's weather. It's proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Puff Plus. And here is today's City View. It's taken of cars parked up along John Wilson Ocean Drive. And around the city at 3 o'clock today, 14 degrees recorded everywhere. To the situation and a milder west and northwest flow will develop this week ahead of a weak trough. It's due in on Thursday. To the forecast for the main towns in the Lower South Island for tomorrow, uh, cloudy in Gore with strong nor'westers there and rain for Tiana with strong nor'westers, 14 degrees. Strong nor'westers and mostly cloudy for Queenstown, Omaru, Wanaka and Twizel tomorrow, highs are between 16 and 18 degrees. In Dunedin tonight, possible light rain but becoming fine with a low of 8. Sunny periods at first tomorrow, but high cloud will increase during the day with northwest winds, a high of 19. That's uh, something to look forward to. And on Wednesday, scattered rain with strong but mild northwesters and a high of 16. And finally, to the Otago Pallet Fires tidal and fishing information, low tide tomorrow morning is at 11.30. High tide follows shortly after 5 p.m. And fishing conditions look good tomorrow, especially around a quarter to two in the afternoon. And that is local news for Monday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.
This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.